Thank you very much for joining me on this Monday, meteorologist Brian Shields. This here, take a look at this. This is the footage from February 22nd, 1997 in Paparo in Trinidad. This is a mud volcano shot a couple uh, hundred feet up into the air. And fortunately, uh, it, when this happened in 1997, um, there were uh, some kind of tremors. So folks were able to leave their homes, but this did uh, uh, devastate uh, this area, the immediate area. It uh, took out some of the homes and unfortunately some livestock uh, stock were lost. Uh, no lives were lost with this, but this was uh, quite the shock to say the least, uh, the scene of this. Again, back in 1997. Now, mud volcanoes have been in the news lately. There's been a few around, some new vents around uh, that we've been watching. Now, mud volcano, it's it's not like a regular volcano. Here we're dealing with uh, sediment coming up. There's a lot going on underground. Now, this is releasing hydrocarbons, so you're looking at carbon dioxide, uh, methane that comes out. Things just, gases are down below. Sometimes they need to be released. These mud volcanoes, we're not dealing with uh, lava, so they're not quite as hot. They can be hot. Some of them are actually cool. A lot of them at the bo uh, boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which of course you need to be away from. And then a lot just kind of bubble up like you're seeing here. This is just kind of a, a sample of one. Some of the cooler ones, there's a few of those around the uh, world, and these happen around the world. Uh, some of the cooler ones people like to take mud baths in. So that is kind of something different there. But what we've been seeing lately is, uh, here's uh, Paparo, we'll get into that in a second, but uh, into the uh, eastern areas of Trinidad, there's been a couple new vents that have opened up. And anytime you see something from the ground opening up, of course, that does cause alarm. So I'm going to keep an eye on these. Hasn't been anything significant like we saw back in 1997. So again, this is not the same area, this one more off to the east. But watching this area, this here, and relative to uh, Paparo, Paparo's over here, Port of Spain up here. So you're down to the south, southeast of that. You can see here, this is a much larger uh, mud volcano and it had that uh, solid eruption back in 1997. These could be several kilometers deep, several miles uh, deep. Uh, but again, it's a lot of sediment just trying to release the gas. So uh, there's been some new vents that have opened up releasing those hydrocarbons. So that is something I'll be watching. If I get any more information on that, I'll let you know. And please leave the comments. I've seen a few great comments about that. If you live around some of these, so keep me posted. Tons of cold air to the north. We've been seeing these fronts getting closer to the Caribbean as expected. Exactly what we were talking about last week, the Arctic outbreak. It is in place across the United States and of course, parts of Canada, which makes sense. Here's the tail end of one front up here, Bahamas back through Cuba and Mexico. We're going to see that secondary front. In my last video, I was talking about that. We are going to see the wind shift. I want to show you the winds in a second. Now, here's what's going on. Broad picture, then I'll zoom down and I want to show you the winds. Plus, I want to get a look at New England up toward uh, eastern Canada. We have a new front that is uh, kind of taking shape and you see it here. This is going to move into Florida and the northern Bahamas as we work our way into tomorrow with it a chance of rain, mainly to the north of the Caribbean through tomorrow, just allowing that Arctic air to continue to either stay in place or plunge more to the south. Another system working into the Pacific Northwest and watching us uh, southwestern areas of Canada this is by Wednesday. Now, as we get deeper into the week, we're going to see another system. It's been one after another. This is a classic El Nino winter, not uh, exactly um, uh, what we always see, but it's one front after another, which is what happens in an El Nino winter. And here's another system coming in by Thursday. So another one's going to dive down, reinforcing that cold air. Now, I want to show you how close they get to us in the Caribbean. We are going to see the wind shift for a lot of us, not all of us. Southern zones not so much. This is today. These are the winds. Now the arrow is a little bit small on this, but I'll take you through it. These are northerly winds right here. So this is the system working through, I mentioned through the Bahamas into Florida late tomorrow. There are the winds. It's going to be cold in parts of Mexico over toward the Yucatan. Belize, a northeasterly breeze. And then this is by Wednesday, a northeasterly breeze right through Cuba and the Cayman Islands, very close to Jamaica. Looks like at the Cayman Islands, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night, we could even uh, by the time we get into uh, uh, Tuesday night, we could get some of that cooler weather moving in so that northerly flow through the Bahamas. And then by the end of the week, we start to see more of that southerly flow 
again, of course, the easterly flow that's been bringing us a few showers through the Caribbean, but then we'll keep an eye on that next system that may do the same thing. So yes, in our northern zones in the Caribbean, winds will turn out of the uh, north and northeast, especially Tuesday night, Wednesday and Wednesday night with some cooler weather. Now, as we go throughout the day today, spotty showers possible. Picking up again, Guyana and Suriname. Isolated flooding will be a potential. And I want to show you the northern end of the system in a second. Spotty showers elsewhere. This is by the time we get into tomorrow. We'll keep an eye on that area of rain near the northern Bahamas back through uh, Florida. And they may clip by Cuba, even a couple brief showers, Mexico and Belize with that front that's going to move in. And that will usher in at least temporarily some cooler weather in our northern sections. Now this up here getting over toward uh, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, uh, Newfoundland, Prince Edward Island. Look what happens. This is through the day today. Systems back uh, toward the west. But as we work our way in time, as we get into tomorrow afternoon, it starts to move in. Rain, snow mix again. It's been one system after another. Unfortunately, there's been some uh, devastation in parts of the Atlantic region of uh, Canada and Maine right along the coast with the intense flooding with these systems that have moved in, wiping away Away some homes and at least some uh, fishing cabins. I've been seeing some scenes of that. Then by Wednesday afternoon, this will work across Newfoundland and then that will eventually depart. And then we'll watch out for the next system moving in. So Jamaica, some spotty showers possible, 40% chance, 30% chance of the Cayman Islands. Again, uh, Tuesday morning, a little bit cooler in the Cayman Islands, or rather Wednesday morning, I should say, and Wednesday with that northeasterly breeze. Trinidad and Tobago, keeping an eye on those mud volcanoes, those new vents, 40% chance of rain, 40 percent chance of rain tomorrow. Uh, this would be spotty showers in Grenada and over towards St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Rain chance 30 percent Barbados tomorrow and Wednesday. Passing shower possible 30 to 40 percent chance in St. Lucia. Persistent Easterly flow, which is common this time of year. Martinique, uh, the rain chance 30 to 40 percent, 30 to 40 percent chance in Dominica, 40 percent chance tomorrow. And we'll see that same thing in Guadeloupe. Moving forward, rain chance holding at about 20 to 30 percent. Antigua and Barbuda, a 20 percent chance. St. Kitts, uh, Nevis, and uh, Montserrat, and a 20 to 30 percent chance. Anguilla and St. Bart's. Now, 20 percent chance of rain today. St. Martin, Sebastia, 30 percent chance tomorrow and Wednesday. Easterly flow is going to be a little bit stronger. Puerto Rico rain chance 20%. U.S. Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands a 20% chance and rain chance in the Dominican Republic 20 to 30%. 10 to 20% chance across Haiti, 40% chance as we work our way through the uh, Bahamas watching those fronts that will be sweeping by. Limited chance of rain those southern Bahamas and then back through the Turks and Caicos. Rain chance 30% tomorrow in Cuba and we're looking at about a 30% chance tomorrow in Belize. I showed you that front that will kind of squeak by. Could give us a few showers in some spots. 40% chance by Wednesday and watching that over toward the Yucatan and Mexico. Rain chance 30% the next couple days in Aruba. We may catch a shower. Curacao, Bonaire could see a passing shower. About a 20% chance. Bermuda rain chance is really going to pick up late tomorrow into Wednesday with that next front moving in and some of the higher seas. Costa Rica, 20% chance of some rain. Rain chances elevated though. Guyana in Suriname. I mentioned the isolated flooding. I was showing you that. Watching out for that in a 20 to 30% chance in northern Venezuela. So a lot of different things going on. Watching the mud volcanoes and monitoring earthquakes. There's been a few new ones, but of low magnitude near the DR and uh, Puerto Rico the last few days. These cold fronts getting closer. Arctic air in the U.S. But again, watching uh, some of the winds coming down out of the north and then by next week we can see a buildup of rain in the Gulf of Mexico and Western Caribbean. I will be monitoring that as we go forward. Until then, thank you for being part of this weather community and joining me taking the time out of your day. Have a great day ahead.